right, thank you everybody. Uh, with that, I'm delighted to uh, introduce our speaker, Mr. Jeff Ward with the warm cookie and his brand promise is true because those cookies were warm. <laughs> so, Jeff, thank you for being here today and thank, thank you. you for the cookies, we appreciate it. Thank you. <clears throat> that was really nice to hear about everybody, that's, that's awesome. Um, <clears throat> I will say that um, in my career of entrepreneurship, um, I didn't hear anybody here from SCORE, but I saw a note downstairs, SCORE really helped my wife and I when we started entrepreneurship many years ago, about 100 is when we started that ago. So um, I am not a professional speaker, obviously not a professional dresser either. <laughs> I, uh, I tore my Achilles tendon acting like a 16 year old. I'm not 16, I'm 17. So um, my body lets me know that very often anymore. Um, <clears throat> so six weeks in a, in a boot. Um, it gives me a reason to say that's why I'm wearing shorts. Um, if I wear pants to the store, all of the employees gasp that I actually have pants on. So I mean shorts, not any pants. And, uh, don't, don't get me confused. So, um, <clears throat> again, I'm not a professional speaker. I've done a lot of public speaking, but um, usually I'm a bit risque, so I'm gonna really tone it down today. I'm um, used to talking to law enforcement. So, um, um, so, again, my name is Jeff Ward. I am not the creator and developer of the Warm Cookie. My wife, Trisha Ward, is the one that came up with this scheme um, she, uh, uh, and I have laryngitis, so I'm chewing gum to keep some, some movement going. So I know that's very unprofessional, but if I suck on a loz lozenge, I'm going to probably drool on myself. So I apologize. <laughs> so what the warm cookie is, is we deliver, we deliver warm <coughs> cookies. They come in the boxes that you saw back there. There's a bow on there. If you've never used us, you can order online, you can call us. You tell us what you want to leave on your special greeting to whoever you're sending them to, or if you're having a cookie emergency or a chocolate emergency that day, we can usually get them to you within a couple hours. Um, it's really busy, but that's what our business is, and 85% of our business is gift giving. So we're more of a florist that delivers cookies and Valentine's is our biggest day. Um, the two weeks before Christmas, every one of those days are our biggest. Um, Boss's Day, Boss's Day and Valentine's Day alone uh, for individual days are our two busiest days, the, the two days you should kiss up. So <laughs> I guess we're a kiss up business because <laughs> just, we just look at the day. It's Boss's Day and, and, and Valentine's Day. Um, but again, my wife, Tricia, is the one that started this. Um, I'm going to back up a long way to the beginning of our entrepreneurship, though, and it goes way back, but I'll try to keep it short. Um, I think it's an interesting story, but I like to hear me talk. So, I mean, uh, so my wife and I are originally from Michigan. Um, uh, for football fans, you probably remember the 97 Michigan football team. They were national champions. Uh, I don't think so. They were. Actually, Nebraska and Michigan shared it that year, but when I'm in Nebraska, I use that joke. When I'm in Michigan, I do it the other way. Um, so um, we met when I was in high school. She had already graduated. Um, we lived about, we didn't go to the same school, but we met through a friend. Um, that was in 1979, so this year is 41 years together, so a long time. Coming up on 38 years of marriage, um, she robbed me from the cradle and married me when I was 19. So, um, but uh, we both were in the food service business. Um, I love the food service business. Uh, I worked at a very fancy restaurant in my hometown, a small hometown. Uh, a lady named Bonnie Ebenho had started a. Uh, she renovated a huge mansion, kind of like the bed and breakfast ones here, but it was a monstrous mansion that was built by a lumber baron 
back in Michigan in the um, early 1900s. She renovated it gorgeously. We were about 100 miles from Detroit, and we would fill up on the weekends with people from Detroit. It was a little pricey. Um, I started working there. Um, prior to that, I stocked shelves at an IGA for from age 14 till 18. Um, Bonnie um, asked me to come work for her. She had a catering business for 20 years in the area, um, biggest catering business I'd ever seen. And they, they did probably 12 counties. They were just, they were huge. And they did it all through family. They had like eight children. Um, Bonnie was an amazing person. I talk more about her than I do my own family just because she was such an inspiration for my wife and I. But um, uh, Bonnie developed this, asked me to come work there. Um, I wanted to be a cook. I, enjoy, I already at 18 years old enjoyed cooking. Um, they had hired a chef for this fancy restaurant. Um, he would yell vulgarities at me during the first week prior to us even opening because I couldn't crack an egg with one hand. And I mean, I mean loud, strong vulgarities. And after a few days of putting up with him, I went to Bonnie and said, I, I quit. I'm, I'm not. <laughs> I'm going back to stocking shelves. I, I like, I just, I don't want the stress. I'm a, I'm class clown. I'm, I'm happy go lucky. I don't want the stress. Is that word Randy? I'm sorry. I think it is. I think it. I honestly believe. It. I need to go back and look. It really could be, um, but just it just was incredible, and it was everyone. And a lot of people started quitting before the restaurant even opened. And a couple of days later, Bonnie called me and said, uh, "Would you um, would you come back and work in the kitchen?" I said, "I just don't want the stress." And she said, well, we fired him, and I want to make you our head cook. I said, I'm 17 years old going on 18. And she said, it's going to be me and you, Jeff, in the evening and another gal in the daytime, and I'm going to guide you through this. And she did, and it, it, I never have lost uh, Bonnie's inspiration. She's passed on, and, and when Bonnie built this in our little town of, I don't know, it's about the size of Seward, um, then all of the mansions on the main street got bought up and the town just flourished. It, it, was, it was unbelievable. It was a transformation because of one business and one lady's uh, dream. And uh, when she passed on, uh, all of those businesses folded under. So she was, a, she was just a binding agent for everything. And uh, it's just unbelievable how one person can have an impact. So you can have an impact. Um, my wife managed a pizzeria at that time. We both did that, and um, a job came open that I could sell yellow page advertising. So I started doing that after a few years. Cold calls, hated it. Got promoted because I did good. We got moved up to the nicest town in Michigan, Traverse City, Michigan. Um, it didn't go over very good. My wife and I were both doing sales not good, so I became a saute chef at the fanciest restaurant in all of Michigan, um, at the Grand Traverse Resort Village, owned by uh, Jack Nicholas. Um, great, great thing. Still wasn't making enough money. Joined the Army to get some college money to go to culinary school. Became a military police officer. Uh, decided I really liked that. Um, so, wife and I, we lived in Germany for a couple of years, got to do a lot of culinary testing over there, worked in El Paso, Texas as a military police sergeant um, at Fort Bliss, and then applied to the Nebraska State Patrol, moved to Nebraska. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing against Nebraska, but it's the most boring state in the United States. I've been to almost all of them. I don't think it's I don't think there's any place more boring. So, but it's a wonderful place to raise your family and your children. I, um, we love it here. I mean, we say going home because you always do when you're from England, you're going home, you know, even if you've lived here 30, 40 years, we've been here 33 years, we say we're going home, but this is our home. This is where our children are. This is where our grandchild is. And 
it's where our business is and it's where we've done a lot of entrepreneurship um, after about seven years as a trooper on the state patrol we lived in Havelock and we would walk by the old uh, abandoned fire station on Havelock Avenue and I'd always stand there and look in the window and tell my wife I'm like this would be the coolest restaurant I could do this we could do this and she's like yeah, we have $25 if you want to check the checking account, you know. You work for the state, I don't work, we have $25. And I would do that all the time, and we're walking the girls past it, and one day she says, I'll tell you what, I'll make you a deal. You go to Havelock Bank, ask them for the money to build a restaurant. If they give it to you, we'll do it. So, I'm like, is that a dare? <laughs> so... Um, yeah, she still regrets that. Um, so she, uh, she um, I went and took a SCORE class um, to learn how to do a business proposal. I must have wrote a really good one because I took it to the bank and said, here's what I want to do, here's what it's going to cost. I spent a couple weeks, I'm a spreadsheetaholic, so I was able to put all the spending down and I came real close and uh, took it to the bank and the president of the bank of Havelock Bank at that time said, um, I think it's something that Havelock needs, I will do it. And I said, um, you might wanna go check our checking account. My wife says there's $25 in there and I don't know if we put gas in the car yet today. <laughs> and uh, he, he said, we'll fund the whole thing. We think it's a good idea. And so, Try to do that nowadays, get a 100% loan for a restaurant that's not even existing. And so they took a big chance and uh, um, my wife and I took engine house number four <coughs> in Havelock and renovated it and created the engine house cafe. If you've never been up there, you need to go up there. We don't own it anymore. So my wife's regret was we had two little girls we went on to, uh, I stayed as a trooper, so I worked from 4 or 5 p.m. in the evening until 2 or 3 a.m. in the evening, it changed sometimes, and I had Thursday, Friday, Saturdays off. We worked 10 hour shifts. Trish would get up on the days I was working at five o'clock in the morning and go down and open the restaurant. We thought it was gonna be just like everything we do. We thought it was gonna be this cute little cafe that a few people would stop in and have a meal here and there and we would need one waitress and her running the cash register and I'd cook, um, which later in about a month led to 15 employees. <laughs> and kind of in the, if you're looking for employees right now, we were kind of in the same mode that, that Nebraska is in right now. Um, everyone's looking for help. And in the restaurant business, especially beginning restaurant business, you want help at minimum wage. Well, good luck. In the first six months we were open, we needed 15 employees. We did, I did 55 W-2s that year for a six month period. So people, it was just a revolving door. I even loaned people our van because they're like, well, I don't know if I can get to work. It's like, take our van, we've got another car, if that'll get you to work. And come in the next day and they're not there. I'm like, well, that was a smart cop move, wasn't it? <laughs> but the vehicle was there, but then they weren't there. So I thought, well, that, that, was, that was real smart, but we like, we like to be helpful, we, you know. But so went through all of that, Rigam Aurora, the, the, the Engine House Cafe was a huge success. Um, we kept our prices really low. We were just getting ready to raise our prices and went through just a turmoil in our life, which we all do and um, we had lost six uh, very close friends and family, including a niece, my mother, the man who was pretty much my father um, growing up, and it was just a rough, rough time. And uh, we were just stressed out to the max, and I was still on the patrol, and it was time to make a decision, either do the state patrol, get rid of the restaurant. State patrol had health insurance, stayed with that, sold the restaurant for a good profit, went on from there to uh, building houses, and the engine house is still open, so um, uh, tried out. Um, it's on its third owner. The second, the people we sold it to 
had it for 11 years, did, did great, so still doing great. Um, Roger, right now, he's a big advertiser. I mean, he loves to advertise the business. Um, we were always low on funds with that, and it was busy enough. I didn't think we needed to do it. Um, left there, um, sold that, started, went into the home building business just for us. I mean, I, I had construction and plumbing and electrical experience. So my, um, so we did that for a little while and uh, built ourselves a huge home in Malcolm, 4,500 square feet, five bedrooms, five bathrooms. It was big. And that was our first big construction project. And um, then we started flipping houses, um, uh, renovating houses, doing projects for people. Uh, then my daughter decided she was going to get married. And um, step sons are really expensive, I'm here to tell you, when you have daughters, because you have to pay for everything. And we, and the, we started talking about catering and um, started looking at the pricing of catering. And we were only going to invite 60 people. He was inviting 260. 260 people I'll never see again in my entire life. And it was going to be 20 to 25 to $30 a head. And $20 was the cheapest we could go. And I told her at that price, I could build a catering kitchen, buy all of the equipment, and, and then when our other daughter gets married, I'll have it all and we can do it again and it'll pay for itself. And uh, so I did. <laughs> Just not real smart. So we found, uh, we went down to the Grand Manse where she wanted to have her wedding and while we were there I met with the owner, Monty Freilich, and <clears throat> we took part of the vault room, built a new wall, had a brand new kitchen built in there and we started catering and again we thought, oh well this is cool, we'll just, we can do it whenever we want because now I'm an investigator for the state patrol and I'm on call 24 hours a day, I get called out usually once or twice a week for inmate deaths or something. Um, I worked mostly sexual assaults and um, child sexual assaults and, and dead people. I mean, that was pretty much my life for the next 15 years. Lots of fun. Um, so, um, but, um, so we started catering. My wife had her own home cleaning business from the time we moved to Malcolm, even prior to that. She had started her own home cleaning business, just her, um, and it just, that blew up, and she was full every, every single day. And so she had that little entrepreneurship going. <clears throat> we had the catering going. It was called Milestone Catering. <clears throat> um, I want to tell a little story about that. When you're trying to come up with your names for your business, we know we're building this. We have no name. We've got to come up with a name because we've got to go to the Secretary of State's office. We've got to go to revenue. We need a name. It's a big part of starting your business. You've got to have a name. Um, she wouldn't go with, I had, my construction company was Chrome Dome Construction. She wouldn't do that. <laughs> she wouldn't do Chrome Dome Catering. So, um, so the, uh, um, so we, uh, we, we, we went on, we were catering, and uh, we thought, well, this will be, you know, cool. We can do a catering a month or something like that because we just need a little bit more income. Well, then people start coming to you, and they say, well, we want you to cater a 400-person wedding, and we want this fancy menu. And, uh, it's like, and so it's like, well, we kind of had plans that weekend, but this is going to be $20,000. We better do the catering. <laughs> Um, we, we, we could always find staffing. We paid $20 an hour uh, for, ca for catering help and never ever had trouble finding staffing. Obviously it was $20 an hour and people would call in sick to their jobs and come work for us so it was nice. Um, so we never had a lack of employees. We were never shorthanded on that because we paid good. But um, then now we were part of that problem of the twenty, twenty five, thirty dollar a head uh, catering and you know uh, for weddings and stuff like that. But 
people were willing to pay it and we we did it at least an event every weekend from there on out and it just it blew up we never advertised the business at all they had five reception halls in the grand manse but then we we uh um uh they they closed a couple of them but we stayed busy in there but we had a uh, real nice trailer and on game days some game days we'd serve we uh, do meals for 800 people in different areas and uh, we had a little tiny 450 square foot kitchen that's without our equipment in it and we were butt to butt and it was like coming through butt rub you know look out we're moving through and it was it was just rump to rump in there all the time so my wife um, my daughter was going through college at, uh, as an advertising and marketing major um, in Kearney. Uh, then she went down to Texas and worked at this uh, uh, advertising firm down there in downtown Texas, uh, or downtown Dallas. Um, on the, it's called the West End District. It's the old district like, like, a, um, like the old market in Omaha and stuff. So um, she calls us one time, and this is a lot long time ago, and says, while we were doing the catering, she says, you guys need to do this. Every Friday, our company orders from a place called Tiff's Treats. And Tiff's brings us warm cookies, ice cream, and milk. It's like, uh, yeah, no. <laughs> we ain't doing that. We, I have a job. Your mom has a job. We cater on the weekends. We're killing ourselves off. And uh, so... Um, then after about three, four years of the catering, my wife said, I've been cleaning people's toilets 15 years. And Trish says, I'm done. I'm going to try this cookie thing. And we were financially okay. I was getting real close to um, being eligible for retirement. Well, I think I was eligible for retirement. And I was just staying on because you can never get enough of dead people and child sexual assaults, you know. So... I did like my job. I, I had I loved interviewing people. I loved catching the bad guy. Um, so she said, "I'm going to do this." We had a five quart mixer on the counter there that we made dressings and stuff for for our catering. She said, "All I got to do is we have new ovens. We got everything else. I'm going to buy flour and chocolate chips." And I said, "I support you 100 percent. You put up with the Engine House Cafe for four years and." And she had to get up early and still take care of the kids. And I'd get them off to school after three hours sleep and go down and work down there. And I'd take an hour nap here and there and there. And that was hard. That was really hard times. And our kids are grown up now. We can get enough staffing. It's like, she can do that. She says, I can do that during the week by myself. And if I sell five boxes a day, that's $80 a day. That's $400 a week. And I said, that's 1600 a month, my paycheck. We still have the catering on the weekend. This is, this is gonna be perfect. And uh, um, that didn't happen. It was never five boxes a day after the first week. It was 10 boxes a day and a five quart mixer. 10 boxes is, uh, you know, 120 cookies, which is a lot more than one five quart mixer. And so it just, it just started ballooning right away. And so um, uh, we, it honestly was getting ridiculous. And so she couldn't keep up. So we had a gal that worked for us in catering. We called her and said, would you come work for us? We'll pay you really good. She said, I can't believe you called. I was just moving back to Lincoln. I don't have a job. I don't have an apartment. It's like, if you want, you can live in our basement until you find something. She goes, I think I have a friend I can live with. She goes, but now I have a job. And she cried because it was like an omen. She came, she came and started working for us full time. They started doing 15 dozen a day. And 17 dozen a day became the average. And then 20 a dozen a day became the average. And I was burning vacation because of orders that were coming in. And so I quit investigations, went back to be a road trooper, and went back to the night shift, which with 27 years on the patrol, you don't find the old guys on the road working night shift. And so I still kicked butt. Those, I, 
<laughs> Tearing it up over those young punks. I did. I'm a magnet for shit. It doesn't matter. <laughs> if it's weird and it's going to happen, I was the magnet for it. So even the young guys are like, how do you get involved in this stuff? I'm like, I just sit here. It comes to me. So, um, so I went, so I was working with her in the daytime, working 10 hours a night on the road doing that. And by the way, once she started this, the catering business was done. I mean, it, 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 it took over our lives. And next thing we were at 20 dozen a day, 25 dozen a day, 30 dozen a day. We were all three out doing orders. I would take the orders on the phone. I would take a picture of it, email it to my printer at the kitchen. And I'd say, there's five new orders there. So whoever gets back first, cook those, you know? So, um, so it was just, it was crazy. And we've just, we've learned so much. We were talking about it the other day, Aubrey, our manager, she's still with us. Um, she said, uh, one day she says, I'm going to stay after about 15 minutes. If you don't mind, I'm going to fold like 20 boxes. So we have enough for tomorrow. It's like, Oh, that'd be so nice. Cause then we don't have to sit there and try to fold boxes and, and make the bows and all the stuff that we have to do. And, uh, so, um, just kept growing and growing and growing and now we moved out of the Grand Manse, uh, coming up on, we're coming up on four years ago, we moved down to Ninth and Pioneers uh, by the Jet Splash there, by, the, um, by Shogun. We're the closest building to the, the car wash, um, right there at Ninth and Pioneers, just north of the penitentiary. I wave at some of my, my <laughs> friends over at the prison. Hi guys, remember me? They don't wave back with all their fingers. <laughs> I don't get it. So they're not very nice. But uh, so uh, um, um, now we have, uh, there's 10 of us there every day. We have eight full-time employees. Um, we have three part-time. Two of the part-time girls are college girls. Um, one of the part-time ladies is a uh, retired state trooper. She retired about eight years before me, always been a good friend. Um, so she comes in during our Valentine's weeks, the weeks uh, during December, Boss's Day and the day before Boss's Day or the day after Boss's Day for the people that forgot to suck up on Boss's Day, <laughs> that send cookies that say, I'm sorry, I forgot to suck up on Boss's Day. So I gotta tell you a story about that. God, I hope you're not in this room. <laughs> Sometimes my mouth overrides my brain. I don't understand. And so it was boss's day. Some lady said, well, you were 45 minutes late with my cookies on boss's day. And she was gone by then. And we were like, we are really sorry. We got overwhelmed. I mean, we had no idea. I said, I had no idea this many people were going to kiss up to their bosses. Yes. And she just went off on me. So if you're in there, you owe me an apology if you're in here. She just went crazy on me. She's like, I love my boss. I wasn't kissing up. Like, yeah, whatever. I like all my bosses too. And I like my wife, but I kiss up all the time. So, but uh, um, I just thought that was funny that, you know, I don't, I like my boss. I wasn't kissing up. Whatever. <laughs> and then we were behind 45 minutes that day, but now we've learned. We just posted on our internet. This is a crazy busy time. Valentine's week is really, really busy. All of our times are always approximate, but we just tell them, you know, your time is really approximate. We're going to get it there within that hour somewhere because there's nothing else we can do. We have to we have to deliver to the entire city. And on an average right now, our slow days, we do about 110 to 120 dozen a day. And on our decent days, our like yesterday, last Friday, I guess almost every day this week, we do about 150 dozen a day. And then our busy days are about 200 dozen a day. And then all those special days um, 
the, the entire month of May is a special day for something. It's, uh, it's Nurses Week, Teacher Appreciation Week, Daycare Provider Appreciation Week, uh, Mother's, Mother's Day Week, um, graduations. It's, it's, May is unbelievable. And then December is, and we do, um, we do about 300 dozen a day. That's the most we can do in a day. We, if when we hit, when we start hitting 260, 280 dozen a day, because it's not that we're just making cookies. We have to deliver every one of those boxes. And 300 dozen a day puts us going out the door at 8.30 in the morning and having five, six, seven delivery cars going all day until, until about 5.30, 6 at night on those days. And it's incredible. And uh, it's... We're running a little short oh, on okay. and I would definitely want to let people answer questions. So I told okay, you I'm long-winded. Let's open it up for questions now because I'm sure people have... Yes. So are you getting to the point where you're like, mm -hmm. you need a second location? Or like, is that in the cards for you? Or are you just... No, because what we're doing right now is, is fine. Um, you know, and, and every single day, I mean, even today, when I got here, I looked and our online ordering, which we had to shut it down to 1130 because it's just too busy every day. And I'm, I'm not complaining, but we just have to do that. I mean, we know that at this point on this day, we can only send out 60 dozen in our morning groups. And so we have six people leaving with 60 dozen cookies. And so um, when we talk about more locations, um, we're actually, we've thought about it. I, I'm gonna tell a little sob story here. But everyone tells us we should go on Shark Tank. It's like we have never spent one penny on advertising, not one cent, um, which is hard to believe. And so we're, we're the luckiest business in the world. We've never had empl an employee leave, so we're spoiled in that, but we pay really, really good. Um, it's a gift you can give for under 20 bucks and have it there like that. I mean, you can be sitting in your office and go, oh crap, it's my sister's birthday. Oh. And in 30 seconds, you're ordering cookies for her that are going to get there in two hours, you know. So, um, but um, so our sob story is. Um, so now I guess we can go on Shark Tank because we have a sob story, and my wife came up with that. So don't look back at me and say, "Well, he's an ass." <laughs> he he might be an ass, but it's he's not that way. Um, November 11th, my wife, the creator of all of this uh, conglomeration. Um, had a, a massive stroke and her sorry <laughs> her carotid artery in her brain burst and they told us to gather around her before they put her on the helicopter and transfer her to Omaha that night and uh, up to UNMC because they don't deal with that in Lincoln and said we honestly don't think she's really bad she probably won't be there when you get to Omaha so 10 weeks, she's perfect. She's the, she's the miracle baby. So, um, yes sir. So over the years you talked about how you just have success and popularity. What do you attribute that to? I think my personality. <laughs> well, no, that's totally fine. That's no, honestly, honestly, I think that everything we've done was something that was needed. I mean, a lot of people I think want to create a business. I mean, everybody wants to be their own boss. And I think that just everything we've done, the, the Engine House Cafe was needed in Havelock. Um, we needed more caterers in Lincoln that, that wasn't the same old thing. And now there's a ton. I mean, now there's a bunch. And, um, and I think spending a little bit of money up front to do things right know buy the right equipment and make it proper um, make it easy and then um, and, and, and honestly when my wife started this cookie thing I thought she even she even still says it she's like oh yeah you go ahead Trisha just go do your little thing you know <laughs> and I guess I kind of felt that way I'm like I'm busy I mean and I was really really busy on the patrol and I'm like I don't have time for it if you and my daughter who does the marketing want to get it set up I'll help I'll do anything but uh, um, then as it started going it's 
Thanks for watching my dog. Thanks for being a great dare care provider. Um, happy birthday, happy anniversary. Um, honey, sorry I pissed you off last night. Um, sorry I didn't take the garbage out. Um, sorry your dog died. We, get a, we do a ton of sorry your dog died. And, and some of our biggest business in Lincoln is the dentists order cookies like crazy. I don't know if they're giving them to their clients after, but they're some of our biggest business and hospital business is huge. I mean, what else can you give a nurse? I was in the hospital with my wife for um, six weeks. And what do you do? What do you do for these people that are saving their lives? I mean, you gonna give them flowers? And it's like, I took cookies up to them. We never get to see this. Um, because we walk in and hand it to the counter and it goes back behind the doors. We don't ever see that part. I brought up four dozen to the intensive care unit at uh, University of Nebraska Medical Center and I set them out right outside my wife's uh, room um, where the nurse works and honestly it was like throwing bird feed to <laughs> pigeons. <laughs> yeah. It was, I mean people were plowing over top, I want one of the butterscotch, I use their oatmeal rate, and it's just, and it's squeaking and squawking, it's like, this is awesome. You know, and we never get to see that side of it. I mean, people are very kind and have a lot of nice comments, but it was just so nice to see. So there's so many, there's a thousand reasons to give it, and it's under 20 bucks, and that's why it's successful. Yes? I have like three questions, but one is, have you ever thought of franchising? We're really, really big in the thought process right now. In fact, we've had three people come forward that would like to do it just in the last two weeks. We have no idea why. Um, so we're in the thought process of it. Um, my wife's deal kind of has got our life switched around right now. So she's doing good and not looking for any sob story, but she's the one that said it. She goes, now we could go on Shark Tank because I have a sob story. <laughs> It's like, oh, God. Yes, sir. Um, do you have to send extra cookies along with the driver so all of them show up? <laughs> Only when there's a fat, bald-headed guy wearing pink drives. <laughs> and actually pizza and potato chips to take care of him. This isn't cookies. It is. I, I probably, I still, I, and that, that's what I can't believe is five years later of doing this, um, it's what I had for lunch yesterday. I do often, it's what I have for lunch, is a cookie and a milk. But do you really want some guy that looks anorexic selling you cookies? <laughs> no. This is the perfect cookie shape. One more, one more question. Thank you for your service, first of all. And do you have gluten-free and are you hiring? Um, we are not hiring. We kind of are overstaffed right now. Um, and we only have, we've switched down to only gluten-free on chocolate chip, but those are only on pre-order. All other cookies we have available all during the day. We keep them warm and keep them rotated. And, but they, uh, um, uh, it's, uh, it's just, those are really expensive to make and we just don't keep them on hand and we don't want to throw them away. We donate over 20,000 cookies a year to charity. Um, not to several charities, only to one, because they distribute to a bunch of people and they come and pick them up from us. It's Food Net, and they come pick up all of our cookies that are left at the end of the day, or they just don't meet our standards during the middle of the day. They've been in the warmer too long. Um, but all orders that go out of the store are um, cooked fresh to order. I mean, you order it, we put your address on the paper that we're putting them on, on the parchment paper, and they're cooked. They're boxed and they're gone. So, just like pizza, but cookie flowers. Hey, we are out of time. I apologize for you, uh, for everybody that wanted to ask. You Sorry, I yapped so long. Um, we could. I would love to have this go on another hour. That's for sure. <laughs> but please feel free to come up and ask Jeff questions after we adjourn here. Uh, thank you all for being here. You don't have to run off. Hang around. Meet somebody new before you leave. I'm sure Jeff will be up here. Grab one of his cards in the back. Tomorrow is National Entrepreneurship Center Director Day. <laughs> and nice. Pick up one of those cards. You know how to call in the order. That's amazing how that worked out. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, thank you so much.
thank you. We might give you one of our perk oh, very nice. coffee mugs. Thank you. you. Put your milk in there when you're cooking. I just started drinking coffee two years ago. So. All right. Well, thank you all for being here. We'll see you next week. I'll stay up here if you want to talk. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Hey, appreciate you it. To pursue, um, franchising. We, I got some contact names for you. I need that. So I'd be glad to email you that. I need that okay. severely. All right. Hi. How are we doing? Good. So.